So how did you decide to to show Morandi? Why? Uh, Morandi is actually a very special figure yes. for the Chinese people, the Chinese audience. Mm. Um, it's it's actually becoming a phenomena since I don't know since like 2015 people start mentioning Morandi's name but a lot of people don't actually know the painter but they they talk about the palette and the colors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't say I'm the first to to mention Morandi as in a palette wise mm -hmm. but I just flipped through my Weibo mm -hmm. and I realized that in 2011 and I I, I sent out this blog like a Weibo mm -hmm. a message and mm -hmm. saying that you know my autumn clothing palette is all Morandi mm -hmm. and, in, and in an interview in 2012 I also people asked me like how you know my my style is inspired by what, what kind of artists I also mentioned Morandi and then and then it became really huge in like 2015 until 2018 because like this big soap opera yeah, came out it was yeah. like a ancient Qing Chinese dynasty drama. yeah drama yeah. and all the costume was designed in sort of like a Morandi palette yeah. and it sort of got really big and so when you open Taobao, Taobao is like online shopping in China it's the biggest and you type in Morandi and a lot of merchandise would pop out. Wow! It's almost merchandise like, like what? You mean reproduction? No, it's like it's like clothing that is in like Morandi palette color, like so, a light. Morandi palette color became something and a very popular concept. Yes, in China, Absolutely. Absolutely. which doesn't even exist in Italy. It does not exist. It does not does not even exist in Italy or and a lot anywhere. of or anywhere. So this is very special to China. Yeah, I mean Mor Morandi is a is a well known cultural figure in China, yeah. and he's but largely, a lot of people don't know he's a painter. A lot of people they know well. The thing is, they know the Morandi palette. It's been disassociated it, with mean? the artist. Yeah. But however, the artist is very influential in the local art scene since sure. the nineties. Sure. I mean, some of the most famous Chinese painters yeah. were always citing Morandi. In fact, there's but a. But this huge... is in two two different levels yes. of understanding. Yeah. So well, one is wow. the cultural, and one's the artistic. Yeah. Um, That's incredible. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. so we felt the need to really have the public to get to know who Morandi was and, and, and what are other, you know, significance he's achieved other than yeah. colors. <laughs> well, I mean, Morandi as a figure is actually quite important to our, our current period. You know, he's a post-war artist that worked throughout the First and Second World War. He largely lived in isolation. So he left Italy only twice in his life. He lived in a small studio apartment with his three sisters and produced these masterpieces under the rise of Mussolini. Mm. So Morandi in a way is important, not just for China, but for everyone who's coming out of isolation, who's yeah. reconsidering the objects, the things that are important to us in the world or ways of seeing the mm. world again after long terms of isolation. So we felt this was the perfect time. To so but, yeah, for sure. But not everyone is a painter able to have such a uh, severe life, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And it's, it's very also, tough to be Morandi. <laughs> and you're, you're based in France, and it reminds me of this great quote by, um, uh, by Marcel Proust, who says, it's not about discovering new lands, but about seeing with new eyes. Mm -hmm. And I think that bringing Morandi's works to China would also allow our audience to kind of introduce them to a new way of looking through the color palette, through the form, through the objects. And the understanding of what painting really means, mm. yeah. But uh, Marcel Proust, like Morandi, where people stuck in their place, but they are, they are the art to save them, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Which and most Morandi of the people don't have. So how did you manage to organize the exhibition? Well, it was... Uh, a <laughs> it, it's it's months it wasn't easy <laughs> of hard hard work um I it was had, from many different sources yeah too. so so basically we have loans from several different countries everything from private institutions uh or local institutions to private collectors and we've gathered 80 works uh from around the world a large amount are coming from bologna where the artist is from 
And um, it actually, this show marks the largest survey of the artists in all of Asia yeah. and the first ever institutional show in China. So it's quite a triumph um, to get all the works because as you know, uh, Morandi didn't actually make much work in his life. And- 2000 uh, pieces around. Yeah, it was, it was and, and for example, the largest retrospective was at the Metropolitan Museum in 2006. And that was around 110 works. And so we have 80 works that span from oil paintings to etchings to watercolors from still life to landscape. Okay, so that's very interesting. And uh, who is the curator? That's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so is it a successful show? It, it is very, very successful. successful. We have like queues lining up very out of the museum. Like 100 meter queue. Very successful. You but, have a, a little field? bit affected by the COVID situation yeah. again. The, the impact of the show is incredible. It's huge. We have professors are coming in. They're they're teaching classes on Morandi in our museum, and you have right. universities Shumar, who've started Morandi classes, like temporary courses, because the show is in Beijing, and that's how rare it is to have these types of work enter the country. That. It even this kind of impact will ripple and affect even the educational systems that surround the museum to the point where the universities are creating coursework around our um, exhibition program. Can you see this image? Wow. This is how successful it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating, I think. All the story coming from the Morandi Palette. Yeah. Mm. Because and when you, look, when, when you like not only clothing, not only fashion, when people talk about interior design or furniture, they're also architect, not, 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 not too much architecture, but interior, like well, wallpaper, same, yeah. curtains, color of the sofa. They also talk about, you know, the, the palette of Morandi. It's becoming like a huge thing. Okay. No, it is already a huge thing. It's been a huge thing yeah. for a long time. I mean, I mean, to be honest, people have spoken about the palette of Morandi since the 1940s in Italy. People took notes about how unique his palettes were because he was creating his own paints yeah. out of his but own. It wasn't pigments. on like the general public level. Well, it wasn't on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is that, is that, is that what is striking is that now it's really in the conscious of yeah. the yeah. people, you know, yeah. Yeah. following its work. So that's fascinating. And I. Well, now it's like saying Morandi now post internet. You know, back then they didn't have the internet and they weren't, you know, hashtag. They weren't like and, spreading this. Yeah, yeah. So now it can be, it can, Morandi can exist under different contexts yeah. because of the development of certain technologies. Yeah, true. But Morandi's palette was definitely a key element in his success from very early on. Sure. Yeah. 